Okay. So welcome to today's lesson, or um, that's what I'm looking for. Teaching. So I'm going to say it. Let's do it that way. Okay. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. If you haven't seen me teach, you know, I, was, I was here a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago now teaching a different topic, but I'm going to invite in to speak today. Me asked me to come in and help. And today's topic that was on my radar is uh, stop shooting the messenger. I'm going to explain what that is in a moment. But I think I need to give you an a metaphor or explain how it works. As a culture, we've been trained when, what should I say trained? We've been sold a bill of goods, I'll put it that way. That when we have a headache or a backache or something like that, the first thing we do is reach for a painkiller, whether it's an aspirin or a Tylenol or something else. Some people's alcohol, I'm not going to go down that path, but we, we do things to numb the pain. It's kind of a reflex we have in this culture. It's not, it's not something we're given. It's not something that we've been given as a lesson to say, okay, when you get a pain, figure out what it is. And what I'm, um, hang on, I'm just checking one thing here. There we go. Uh, yes, there we go. That's what does it. All right. Okay. So painkillers are something that's part of our culture. We take them for sometimes the simplest reason. You know, a mild headache or a stomach upset will take things to numb the pain, which can feel like a good solution because it takes the pain away. Obviously, it's a painkiller. The challenge, though, is, and I'm going to speak to in moment about the emotional part of this, which is why it's important for your own self-support, is that pain isn't actually the source of the problem. Pain is the messenger caused by the source. It's a symptom, so to speak. You know, when you get a headache, oftentimes, and I'm not a doctor, so I'm going to be careful I say this, but when you get a headache, oftentimes it's because you might not be drinking enough water, for example, or maybe because you've been stressing so much that you've given yourself a headache. Taking medication to numb the pain may, may I guess, obviate the word? Yes, obviate the, the realization of what causes the pain. So, for example, um, well, this is going to, I'm going to be careful I say this one. There's a story I heard a long time ago from somebody who said, basically, our body has an amazing ability to be in homeostasis. If you eat something that is bad for you, your body will try to get rid of it, either at the top or at the bottom. <laughs> I'm trying to be as polite as I can be about it. But the thing is, if we don't do that, if we take like, um, uh, like a stomach, um, what do you call those things? Like, like an indigestion tablet, pill, whatever it is, to stop the, the discomfort inside, then you'll be in a place where this toxicity, that thing you ate that's bad for you, is still in your system. And if you don't get it out of your system, it's going to create more problems. Now, I'm, I'm, there's a, the bottom line is very simple and it's very, very clear. We are trained, as I said, to numb the pain. So what's this, what's this going to do with self-love? When we feel emotional pain, we are often, um, hmm, choosing the lesser of evils. That we'd rather ignore the pain that's coming up emotionally than face it or deal with it. And like physical pain, emotional pain is a messenger. When we feel sad or hurt feelings, or we want to, we want to lash out even, because anger is also can be a messenger. Yes, anger can be a messenger. We oftentimes want to simply suppress that emotion to put it down because it's not comfortable. Then actually ask the emotion, I'm getting ahead of myself for saying this, but ask the emotion why it's there. I'll get to that in a minute. That's the whole, that's the best one of solutions. But in our lives, it's sometimes, and, and for many of us, and I've had to go through the lesson of this myself, emotions were things that were um, uncomfortable. Is that just me? <laughs> Growing up in England, we didn't express very much emotionally, especially being a man in a, or being a boy in England growing up in a family. Showing emotion wasn't something that was, was expected or appreciated. So we was, always kept, always had to be in a place where we were fine. Everything was okay, we, you know, on a, on a neutral level. You know, trying to sneeze. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. All right. Pass through. 
having a training of not being emotional made it hard for me to express, obviously. And so when emotion did show up, it was kind of like, like push it down, keep it down, hide it. Almost like keeping a beach ball underwater, which is hard to do. When your emotions show up, and they do show up for most of us most of the time, the question is going to be, what do you do with them? You can numb them out, kill the messenger, shoot it down, suppress it, hide it through various uh, recreational resources, including alcohol, drugs, et cetera, or through, for some people, getting rid of emotions could be even having sex with your partner, which can be fun for your partner, but may not deal with underlying emotion. Having unanswered emotions isn't healthy. The same as not allowing the toxicity of your system to get flushed out is not healthy for your body. If you don't um, release and also talk to, and I'm going to talk to that, explain that in a moment, talk to your emotions, then you won't have peace internally. And part of the inner peace and self-love comes from having a, a, a balance inside the homeostasis I mentioned earlier, is to really understand that you can have dominion over your life by having cooperation and collaboration, yes, even collaboration with your emotional expression. So what do I mean by talking to your emotions? In the work I do with my clients, a lot of the teachings or a lot of the tools I have come to the heading of parts integration is a term I've used for a long time so it from my own upbringing my graduate program rather and parts integration means that when you have parts of yourself your emotion your psyche whatever it is that are in, in conflict with you your you yourself rather than separate numb them out suppress them do something else is to actually bring them back into alignment through asking questions through talking to it so the way I've had it, I've worked with my clients and I've done it myself, and it's really powerful. This is a simple technique, but it's so powerful, is to create a space privately away from other people. We can actually have your emotion be a, even an animated character if you wish to, but be able to talk to it. You can do it. When you've had practice, you can do it inside, but I, I love showing my clients how to do it externally first by literally putting, well, literally figuratively, putting their emotion outside of themselves. They can talk to it as if you can have a dialogue. And when you're having a dialogue with your emotion, that upset, whatever that is, you can actually ask it questions and then you can put yourself in the position of that emotion to speak back. Now, I just gave you about a year's worth of teaching in one moment. So let me explain on a bit more clearly. That may have sounded weird when I explain what that is. I, I've used it so many times, I forget to my house. Some people go so aliens of them. We can talk to our parts of ourselves easily. In fact, one of the most powerful tools we have is the ability to actually converse with the parts inside of ourselves. Not like we're, it's not like we're schizophrenic or multiple personalities. We're actually multifaceted beings. And so realizing that who we are is not just the one that's thinking behind the eyes. It's all these different parts of ourselves. Those parts can be dialogued with, can be communicated with. And so what I'm talking about what I'm explaining here is how you can do that in a very simple, but also very elegant way. So again, this is something you do privately, separately away from other people, because they may think you're crazy when you're doing it. But putting your upset emotional state, whatever that is, maybe you're feeling upset because, um, well, maybe, this is an example. You're driving on the freeway and someone cuts you up and you get extremely upset about it. Now, part of you may be going, why am I doing that? Why am I getting so upset about this person doing that thing? When you get home, not when you're driving, but when you get home, if you choose to, you could put that emotion into another, like if you want to put two chairs facing each other, that works really well. Or you put it on the couch and you can sit one in the couch, move the other in the couch for the emotion. Put that emotion outside of yourself and ask it what it was about. Like, you know, first of all, oh, let me qualify that. You want to be appreciative of the emotional expression, that thing, that aspect of yourself. And you want to be willing to ask questions that are constructive, not destructive. So you're not saying to you, it's like, how dare you? Why'd you do that? You're not, you're not punishing it. That emotion is giving you to give you information like a messenger. Again, don't shoot the messenger. When you ask that emotion questions, first of all, you can say thank you for expressing because that emotion was trying to get your attention. Let's say that again. That emotional upset was trying to get your attention about something. If life was going smoothly, everything would be fine. When we get emotionally upset, distressed, or bent out of shape for something, that's a clue. There's something out of alignment. But rather than suppress the emotions, 
shooting the messenger, you actually bring the emotion up to talk to it, to speak to it, to find out why it's there. What is its mission? What is it doing to help you? So I'm going to give you, uh, let me finish that bit and I'll explain, I'll show you another example. There we go. That was the piece of missing. Okay. So in the dialogue, you're going to ask that, that emotional component, that emotional character inside of yourself. What was it? What was this mission? Excuse me. What was this mission? What was it doing for you? Because it's there to support you. Again, another, another law of this, so to speak, is that it's here to support you. So that emotional upset, that emotional um, signal, that's a good word, was intended to signal to show you something clear as that. So you can ask it what it was there for. And don't be surprised if I, I'd be very happy for you to get an answer back. So again, you can be in the aspect of the yourself asking that part questions and then switch chairs into the other part, being that emotion to answer back. Now, when you're sitting in that chair, don't try to think about it. <laughs> you actually want to be in a place to let it come out of you. You'll feel it. If you really trust the process, and this is a, definitely a building trust, and you may want to practice this a few times before it starts to really happen, but you sit in the other chair and you'll get a response, which may be something like, um, I'm very concerned that you might get injured. The, the, the fear came up because I was very upset about the coast and cutting you off because I was worried about you might lose control of the car and I was very concerned about your safety. The emotion was basically there being triggered by some part of you wanted to keep you safe. That's the, again, the reason, the purpose of that emotional expression is to um, provide a message from a deeper part of yourself that's attempting to communicate with you. So let me, do, let me give you a practical example you can use anytime you stub your toe or have a physical pain of some sort. Now, I'm, 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 it's harder to do it now, it's better to do it with, actually do it with a live audience, it's much easier. Um, so I'm going to do it here, but I'm going to explain how it works. So this is something you can use if you get pain, like if you smash your, if you, if you stub your toe, or if you um, have a stomach ache, or if you um, have a headache. This is another way of working with it. It's also easy with parts, but it's a different, it's a playful way of doing it. So this is going to be fun if you're willing to try it on. So say, for example, you um, have a stomach ache. Feel where that is in your body and give, give it a rating on a scale from one to 10. Now you might want to write, put, write, write this down or keep this recording safe for you to use in the future because you can use this anytime you get a pain in the future too. So your stomach ache, put your hand over your stomach and feel pain. It's say, for example, it's a seven out of 10, where one is don't even barely feel it. 10 is get an ambulance, take me to the hospital. So unless, unless it's a 10, you can do this. If it's a 10, you might want to get some serious help. So say it's like, a, it's, a, it's a six. So it's, it's, it's really uncomfortable but it doesn't stop me from living. Okay, great. So then what you're going to do is, is close your eyes in your imagination. You're going, to t you're going to put your hands over where that pain is in your body, the stomach ache, for example. And imagine that you can take that pain out of your body and put it into your hands. Now that pain is now a, an object or a shape, let's put it up, in your hands. And now in your imagination, you're looking down at it with your eyes closed. Imagine what shape it is, what color it is, how heavy it feels, what does it smell like? And as you're doing this, to play back in your mind, it's like, oh, it, it, it feels like stone, it feels very heavy, it's gray, or it's red, or whatever it is. And just to answer back the questions, you ask yourself these questions as you're going through. That pain, again, what, is it, what does it look like? What does it smell like? How heavy is it? Um, what's the surface feel like? Does it feel rough? Because you want to get some very visceral sensory feelings because this makes it more powerful. Then what you can do if you want to get really um, creative is you can imagine there's a zip on the top of that object, that, that pane, and you can move that zip and open, open it up. And inside, you can then open up and see what's inside it. Again, if you want to make it really creative, you can imagine putting your finger inside and then tasting it and saying what it tastes like. Again, all the senses involved. Most people do this and they get like they get they have fun with it, but also the idea is it can be very informative. Okay, close the zipper up, put it back. Now, now what you're gonna do is allow that object in your hands to transform again with your eyes closed and your imagination 
the amount of objects transform into a cartoon character of some sort. Imagine it growing legs and arms and a head and have it if I show an expression. It could be a cartoon character you know from the movies or it could be just some unique character you just come up with. It's animated and it can talk. So once it's in your hands, you can say the following, you can ask the following questions and say the following statements to it. So you can say something like, um, pain, thank you for being here. Yes, you're gonna thank you for being here. The second question, and, and you may get a response, you may not. You can say, the next question you can ask it is, um, I remember the sequence of this. Thank you for being here. Um, what is it that you want to tell me? What is the message you want to give me? Why is it, you know, what is the message you want to give me? Well, the message might be as simple as, you know, like if it's a stomach pain, you know, don't eat those tacos again. They were bad for you. It could be that simple. It might be something deeper than that. It might be, um, I'm feeling unloved because this emotional, this pain teaching could tie to emotions. So again, character, counting character in your hand, you're talking to it. Thank you for being here. You ask it what its purpose, what its message is. Um, next question is, I'm just remembering the sequence of questions. Excuse me a second. Oh, yes. Next question is, how can I, how can I, how can I help you complete your message? How can I help you? Um, and this question escapes me. So let me hang on a second. Basically, what you're asking about the pain is, how can I help you complete so you, so you can be gone? But you want to say it in a more informative way, but you can, if you need to do that one, you can. So the frame will then tell you, it's like, okay, now, now it's time to um, go get an alka seltzer, maybe just simply not go and get tacos again. It, it's whatever the message is, the message is. I'm seeing, I think there's one more question. That might be it. Oh. You can finish up by saying, yeah, there is. You finish up by saying, I appreciate you being here and I thank you for supporting me. And what you then let, let that animated character do is to go back into the object. So the arms dissolve, the legs dissolve, and it becomes the, the blob, the object that was in the hand in the first place. Now what you can do is that zipper you put on top of it, open the zipper up again, and now in your other hand, you can imagine you're going to have, this is, very, this is all in imagination, but it, it works, trust me. Imagine you have in your hand a pitcher of clear, cool water. What you do is pour that water into the paint, into where the zipper is, into, into that paint. And then what you do is you're going to then shake out the paint, let the water drain out, drain all the toxicity and all the stuff that's in there, and then pour in more fresh water again. And you keep doing this back and forth, fresh water in, pouring out toxicity until it feels light and empty. When you're done with that, pitch it down, it goes down, take that paint, which is now basically a like paper thin, you crumple it up, and just throw it away. Now, this is all in your imagination. It sounds, it may sound silly, it may sound ineffective, but trust me, this will work. Because then after you've done that, put your hands back over your pain where it was, like your stomach pain, and ask, ask what number it is, how, how much it is. I can pretty much guarantee you it's gone down by a bit. It may have gone down by a complete amount. It may have gone from like a six to a one. It may have gone down from six to a four. But by doing this, when I do anything externally, you'll have reduced the pain. Now, that's physical stuff. The same thing is true of emotional pain, meaning that your emotional pain is governed by your own internal experience with it. So when they say, don't shoot the messenger, what I'm literally saying is that communication from that physical pain, emotional pain, even mental pain, is a message for your attention that can help alleviate what's causing it. Because the pain is a symptom of something that's causing it. You know, when you get the pain from like stubbing your toe, that's because your toe hurts because you stubbed it. So that so the lesson may be, don't be so clumsy or look where you're walking. I mean, it's that simplistic. But for some of us, when it comes to emotional pain, we don't know what to do with it. So the teaching I want to make sure you get is that you have dominion, first of all, that 
Emotional pain is a message that can be listened to and acted upon to, and that you have the governance inside with, by dialoguing with that emotional pain to release it so you no longer carry it. That's three. So that's the three step process to healing. <laughs> that's one path and one method I use in my clients. So if that helps you, I invite you to practice that. If it's an emotional pain or a physical pain, and occasionally a mental one too, you can use these, these tools to help you feel more free. So I just gave you a big teaching in a very short period of time. So if you have any questions, let, um, you know, let me know if you can unmute and ask them. Um, that was really the, that's really what I want to teach today is just simply about how you can have governance over your own discomfort, even suffering. Because by the way, suffering or discomfort is also part of the pain spectrum and can be dialogued with. So even if you've, even if you've had a long-term um, ailment, in fact, sometimes it's more important to do this. If you've had an ailment, a condition, a situation in your life where you've been in constant pain for years, perhaps, you can even have a dialogue with that pain to ask it why it's there, because you may not understand that the reason why it showed up is for something much deeper than a physical one. Oftentimes, people's physical pain is tied to an emotional experience. That when I talked last time about forgiveness, forgiveness, by the way, is one of the tools that can be used to actually heal pain. Yes, it sounds bizarre. But you can use forgiveness to heal your emotional pain because oftentimes your emotional, sorry, your physical pain is tied to an emotional experience. And with forgiveness, it alleviates the emotional baggage, which then allows the body to heal and the physical pain goes away. So this is this, this is um, powerful stuff. So any questions, any thoughts? Or I think she's cool. I don't you put anything in the in the chat? No. No questions? Was that good? <laughs> or I stunned you with the information. Hi Barry, how are you? I'm this good, Anna. Anna. Hi. Good, thank you. I don't want to. <laughs> and um, that was good. I really, really got a lot out of that. So that was really very helpful. My question you. is, you're welcome. Um, my question is, and I will use it, I will definitely use it and to see how it goes. I was wondering one of two things, two, uh, there's two things I want to say. One is a comment, is, well, they're both kind of questions. The first one is, is part of the reason I like this whole idea that both things are happening within me. The pain is coming from me. It has a message and that my response to it is within me. And what I'm working with, I understand it. My understanding of what you're saying is my, my response is what I can um, make choices about that will affect how I'm going to experience whatever the message is that's coming mm -hmm. up. Right? Yeah. Yep. The, my, 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 I have two, my, my one curiosity is, is the reason why this technique is effective, one, because I'm taking, I'm, 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 I am redirecting my attention to, let's say, a resolution or something else other than just thinking, oh, how terrible this is, uh, or trying to push it away, like the resistance, is that one of the reasons that maybe it's so effective, like, is it just that the, do, putting my attention on something else in a different way other than, you know, like obsessing about the thing that I don't like. So I'm constantly creating it bigger and bigger. That's one. So maybe I'll just stop there. And then I have another part. That. <laughs> um, that is exactly right. Because the thing is when we have a lot of times when we get a, an emotional pain, some people just give up and sit, sit in it. They won't do anything about it or they'll put up with it or they'll complain about it or they'll do what they do about it. And so that doesn't fix it. So having a positive intention, a focused direction, that certainly accelerates the process of transforming it. So yes, your question, answer to your question simply is yes, indeed. Oh, wonderful, thank you. My other question is, I've heard of other techniques where people um, are, you know, find it helpful or encouraged to either like, you know, in a controlled environment to scream or to take a bat and pound on something like pound on a pillow. And that's all done, not, not out of violence against another person, but it's done with the, like a technique. What do you, mm -hmm. how, 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 how do you compare that to this? And what would you say would be the differences in terms of, I don't know, um, what would be the best in terms of 
the type, you know, if you're trying to hold a certain vibrational living style, which one, I mean, are they okay? Both okay. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Certainly. Um, they are both okay. They, they are, they do so different purposes to my, in my mind. What you're speaking about with the physical um, hitting of things, um, I recommend pillows, um, yelling closets full of clothes that don't argue with you. So you can do it so you don't disturb the neighbors. If you go up from those things, they call them in, um, encounter bats. They use them, those in therapy. I've used them before myself. Those things are great because they get you physically exerting. And because the emotions are energy emotion, simplistically, that when you have something big, like it's a real, real fury, you know, rage, upset like that, oftentimes it's hard to have an articulate communication with it because it needs to be calmed down first, so to speak, not to force it, but to allow it to blow off steam. So in a way, you can put them both together. So if you've got so much rage building up that you don't know what to do with it, finding a place to vent it out safely and constructively, because the key is constructive, not destructive. You can vent the emotion out through some physical exertion or, if it, or pounding a pillow or yelling to a pillow, if it, depending where the place is and not being upset there, upset the neighbors. After that point, you've got enough of the energy out, you can then articulate and communicate with it. In fact, when I do the work with forgiveness for all the uh, done over the years sometimes it's best for the clients who've got so much rage tied up to resentment or judgment to get the emotions out first because after that's vented out what tends to be left behind is compassion so part of that releasing method so this is off, off, off the topic of the messenger but by by expressing the pain and the upset the wounding the hurt feelings the rage that can then settle down into a place where there can be forgiveness so this is this messenger piece is a different component, but if it's in the same umbrella, which is it can be used for the emotional pain, but with, if the pain is so far off the scale that you want to go injure somebody, having emotional freedom to do that energy expression without touching anybody else, again, safe and constructive, allows you to be free of the energy so you can then communicate with what's inside. Because an example, if you are so upset with somebody that did something to you or didn't do something to you, that you want to cut their head off, metaphorically speaking, you can go to a room, find a space, yell, call out names, blaspheme, whatever you want to do into a pillow. So the emotion that you've got that's so upset can be let down. And then you can come back and go, okay, so what's really going on inside? And you can then do a dialogue with that emotional piece where that piece can now express um, one articulately versus being just blind rage. And secondly, you can actually have some transformation happen. Uh, that's great. Thanks a lot. And it's it's interesting because I've tried both. I've been in like, you know, therapeutic workshops where they had me, you know, explore that that option of releasing tension. And, and I, I like I it's really interesting. Your technique feels better to my my personality. I, I never I never really liked or felt comfortable with the hitting of. I mean, I know that it's effective for many people and a lot of people mm -hmm. rave, about, rave about it, but. Um, I, I found that like, but that's even in my life. I'm not a person that I, I don't tend, anger is not, I, I don't express anger very much and I don't attack, you know, outwardly very much. My mind is more of an internal attack mm -hmm. and more internal stuff. You know, I'm not an outwardly hurtful person, but I do tend to hold things in and, and compress things in. So I like your technique and I, I, I cause I, I like that those more gentle passive ways of dealing with my emotions. I just feel that um, it works better. And I was wondering, why would that be? Like, why would it be that for some people, this pent up energy, they need to either go running or go for a walk or scream or hit? Whereas with me, I find more like the, I don't know if you want, I, I call it more almost kind of like a mental processing has to be involved, like a certain mental internal dialogue has to be. And I just find that that's more effective for me. And I, can, is that okay that it's some people is one way and the other people is other way? Um, yes, because we're all different. There isn't, yeah. there isn't, there isn't a fixed answer because you know we're all unique. So to say that there's one fixed answer to every person wouldn't be fair. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's nice to know that there are options that I have that work. Well, before we end, if we, ha if there's time, could you just repeat the? T you don't have to do the whole lecture but just repeat the three steps again that you just just to, i want to make sure I, I i got it right in my head the three steps like when the so the pain comes up and you just you, you took us to kind of like it sounded to me like three steps or three 
Yeah, three steps of how to deal with whatever is coming up unpleasantly. Oh, the three questions that you asked, or there's something to that effect. Oh boy, um, I did that in the moment, so I'm not sure if I remember it. You might have watched the replay for that. I don't. I was thinking, but there's three things I didn't write them down, so my apologies. Yeah, maybe not three, maybe I said in my mind, <laughs> it was, but maybe just a summary of how you would deal with it again. If you could just do a recap at some point about how to address these um, these messengers that come up. Don't kill the messenger. I like that concept because well, the messenger is an important message. Right. So the, the, that's the first thing is 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 not to attack the messenger or kill the messenger or shoot the messenger, whatever that is, and to be willing to listen to it. So set up an environment, a space, a way of doing so. I, I do it internally because I've done this for, well, since uh, 94. Yeah, it's been a few years now. I've done this for a while. Is I can access that more internally now. So the practice, you can do it internally, no problem at all. So either do it externally as a a practice, like as you're doing, if you if like doing theater, where you basically set up two chairs, and you have a dialogue type thing, you do it that way is to communicate with it. The key thing is, one of the key things is to be very clear that when you're talking to the pain or that voice, it is being thanked for being there because it's there to serve you. Everything that happens within us, and I'm gonna say, it's gonna sound blasphemous to say, blasphemous to say this, everything happens within us is for us. Even upsets, disease, toxicity is for us. How we deal with it is the key. So being willing to have a dialogue that's uplifting with that part of ourselves, one allows it to express safely because you're creating safe space for it. And secondly, unless it's to be integrated back in because it's a constructive part of who you are, you don't want to eliminate it. It's like cutting off your arm for, reason, for no reason. It's like being able to integrate those parts of yourself. So this process, this whole thing is to realize that these things that show up in our body, the pain is part of who we are because it was something that, it wasn't something that came out, it wasn't like somebody attacked us with a knife. It was something internally in us that we did, like the, like it was stomach pain was because we ate something bad. The pain is part of our um, messaging system, like an internal messenger. So having an opportunity to talk to it in a way it's constructive and integrating back in is how it works best because that creates more integration, less separation. Cool. And then what I heard you also add the last time, now it's all coming back to me, is that... Good. Um, um, I, I take it outside of myself. Like I, I imagine that I'm holding it in my hand or something. Oh, like that, I'm taking that, it outside yeah. of myself, right? And I'm yes. taking it outside of myself just to be more objective about it and not be so like uh, connected to it. Or is that the, is that the, like the diversion or the, you know, redirecting my attention to look at it from a different perspective or something? The reason to put it outside yourself is just to make it easier to communicate. Okay. Because the thing is, for, for most of us, having a spatial separation makes it an easier to have. It's like, it, it's easy for us if we want to make, like, like if we're doing something in, in um, <clears throat> it's easy to talk to somebody outside ourselves than inside ourselves, simply put, unless you've had a lot of practice doing it. So to put it externally into another chair or into your hands, depending on which, which one we're talking about, gives you a point of reference, <clears throat> excuse me, where you can be talking from your, internal self and then answering back from that part that you're talking to it just makes it easier right and that whole process of conversing with it and asking it um what is it that you have to tell me uh you know and uh, you know i want to hear what you what your mm -hmm. is right so i right. like that aspect of it and then and, and also and also and also thank it first because you want to make sure that you want you want to make sure it knows that part of yourself knows that it's welcome to speak to you Right. Because if so, if I don't do that, and if I do what I usually do, which is why are you here? I hate this. Why is this happening? <laughs> then it, like it, then it kind of like, it's like, it's a little, little, it becomes a little rebellious maybe because it needs it, it needs to complete its role or it's, 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 uh, I don't know, it's assignment in terms of communicating something to me, which I'm not allowing it to do <laughs> something like well, that. Well, my question is how, how's that working for you? Well, it doesn't. I just get then upset that I'm upset that I'm upset that I'm upset. <laughs> right. So this is a different technique that can work for you because you're not doing the same old thing again. You know, it's, it's, it's try something different. It might help you. I'm not saying guaranteed it's going to work, but it does work for a lot of people. It, it makes sense to me. I will. And I like the aspect of throwing water on it. I just filled in all the blanks, Throw, cleaning it, cleansing it with water and then dismissing it because it's done its duty. It's given me the message and like you no longer need it. The email has been read, it can be deleted now, right? Something like that. Right, 
although I, one thing I need to clarify, that throwing away the shell isn't throwing away the messenger, it's throwing away the message. Oh, oh. So because that because what it's doing, you're really you're, re you're reintegrating the stuff inside of yourself. What you're throwing away is the image that you created, that cartoon character, so to speak, that visage, not the real thing you're throwing away because the real thing's oh. inside of you. What you're doing is transforming it from pain into inclusion. Oh, I see. Yeah, you did talk about that. I, I missed that one, the cartoon character. And the cartoon, yeah. so putting it into a car cartoon character is a process of taking it from being who I am to what the message is. So the cartoon, the cartoon character is the message in a way, as opposed to me. The cartoon character is the other part of yourself that is communicating the message in the first place. So by, by literally having a image in your in your i mean it's already in your mind anyway because you get your eyes are closed you're imagining this you're imagining a character that you can inhabit and articulate to and from so you create a dialogue right so again what am i throwing away then at the end i'm throwing away the shell the the, the conclusion the, the the understanding the message what is it i want to be clear but, about what i'm throwing away so I physically think. physically what you're doing is you're imagining the yourself you're in, you're filling up and clearing out the toxicity inside this the shell of the pain you took out of your body imagining that it's almost like a an object that was no longer needed so it's i mean at this point the pain is basically much gone because you've already ideally it's gone i mean all, all these teas i'm talking about with the dialogue and the physical act of venting it out is actually methods to allow the pain to dissipate internally oh okay okay so it's almost so you know, so, mm -hmm. go ahead Please. So, so, so that shell is not the pain itself. It's part of the act of allowing the pain to dissipate. Because one, you've got the information from the pain, and two, you're giving it symbolic cleansing, so to speak. I mean, you can use it however you want. I don't have terms saying this is the pain, but it represents that uh, that discomfort that you're releasing. Right. So, really, the throwing away can be kind of almost like as a dissolving or a conclusion or a resolution, so to speak. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That that that, that that's. That's good. I like that. Great. Um, I guess before we end, I'd be curious about uh, to hear a little bit more about your background, what you do, what services you offer. Um, okay. I, I didn't know I could do that. I, I always thought with me, it was like, you know, just keep to the topic. So I, I've got a background in spiritual psychology. I have, my, I have a graduate degree in spiritual psychology and 20 years as a spiritual counselor. Um, plus, I've been in the personal growth training study growth arena since the mid eighties. So I've got a whole um, tool chest of skills and tools I've learned over the years that work for helping my clients. My focus, actually I didn't do a formal introduction. I, uh, I, I took my work as being a, a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I am a relationship coach for specifically helping women own their self-support, self-love, self-trust so they can have attract, they can attract the right sort of relationship. My work's shifted over the last, I've been doing this for many years, but my work's been shifting out of the relationship to help you find the love out there first, because that was never working, to help them find the love inside first. That's why I'm part of this self-love conversation, and that's why me invited me, because we do a lot of work in the self-love arena. But my true work is helping, particularly women, most men don't usually seek me out, to be honest, helping women love themselves enough so they don't need to find a partner until they want to find a partner. It's a big differentiation. We have been trained in this society to be codependent, and I am doing my best to eliminate that um addiction so by learning how to love ourselves fully and being embracing all of those aspects of ourselves and healing ourselves we can then attract a partner that matches that quality of wholeness so that we don't be we're not in 50 50 relationships when we're in 100 100 relationships that's my that's my goal to teach that and i've also got a best-selling book and i've got coaching programs etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'm not gonna go down that path because i don't think i should be selling anything officially um and i i that's what i do Oh, that's wonderful. Um, if, if there are no other questions from anybody else and we have time, then I have another question. I don't know if I should pause and let somebody else talk. And if I not, haven't then seen, I do there's no other questions are showing up so far, so go for it. So you, you, you said something that made me think about something. Uh, so, um, so everything that you were talking about today is how to deal with the pain that's coming from within because it's our pain. And, and I was wondering if somebody physically actually punched me or threw hot water on me or threw coffee on me, would I use the same process uh, in dealing with it? Like, is it a diff like is it applicable also if, if something is happening like from outwardly? I mean, of course, I'm, when I'm talking about 
somebody hitting me, not to the extent, like you said, attend that I need to go to the emergency room. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking, I just was wondering what your thoughts were about that. Um, definitely in that moment, I wouldn't do it because obviously it's going to be a bit strange to do it in the middle of the situation. If the pain hasn't gone away, because I mean, you know, sometimes you get coffee spilled on you or somebody, you know, stuck, bumps into you. The pain may go away pretty quickly on its own. It's not guaranteed to do it for every pain, but if there's a lingering pain afterwards, and yes, it can be used in even in injuries. I've, I've, have, I've had clients who've done, not clients, I've had um, fellow students when I was in the, my grad program who dealt with injuries from past um, accidents they were in and the pain diminished after doing it. Not always eliminated, but it diminished it because you may have done, maybe in a car accident where maybe you had a, you know, you had a leg injury that hasn't, that's healed physically, but there's still a pain that shows up every so often. And you can work with that pain in this process at that point. Um, if you're in the middle of the, of the actual accident, pain, injury moment, it may not be appropriate to use it then, but you can use it other times. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying you do this to fix things, but it can help to reduce the pain because, again, pain being a messenger is something you want to get the feedback from. And it may be as simple as saying, don't do that again, or it might be there's something deeper going on. You know, I found, I've, I've heard of people who used it where they discovered that something that was going on, they, need, they, they found it from the pain, they need to go see a doctor because the pain they had wasn't something past you, something deeper than that. When they had a physical um, ailment, better, more of a better word, that needed to be treated by a natural doctor. So this is not to eliminate using medical doctors or anything like that. This is a, actually a tool can help you with that. But in terms of having a, a pain that keeps happening that's going on, especially again, if you, had, if you did get so, so you said um, someone, someone spilled coffee on you and you felt like you got, you got um, scalded. You can use this technique afterwards, after you've treated yourself, obviously, and done you know, needs to do to treat the physical injury to actually use this technique to help reduce the pain. Because when you start to with the pain, you're putting your, what you're really doing underneath all of that. It's one of the secrets, by the way, is you're putting loving energy into the area where that pain is coming from. So you're actually adding to the healing ability for that healing to happen. So rather than, which people do, cursing be upset with that injury that you had because it was like i was so clumsy i shouldn't have done that or whatever that is or that person should never have bumped into me that's simply going to keep that skull that injury still there or it will prolong it put it that way so by doing something constructive proactive and self-loving focused you can actually reduce the time that injury stays so you can use it that way that in that format so i hope that answers your question yeah, it does. So it sounds to me like basically what this is, is just an empowering tool to help me to just respond in my response to whatever the discomfort is that I'm, that I'm experiencing. It's just a way for me to develop a better relationship with my own internal experiences and how I am responding to them. And, Absolutely. Uh, and then, then adding the, as you said, adding wherever it's coming from, whether a person injured me outwardly, intentionally with ill purpose or whatever, even if I did it to myself by overeating, I could, I could take it as an opportunity to then, um, you know, choose to shift to a healing, a love, uh, a, a healing that's coming from a self-love or a loving, a loving perspective or a love rejuvenation for myself is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Absolutely, you can. And, and and again, this is a self-love centric practice that helps you become more whole. And to use it for the, anything that is ailing you, I mean, the bottom line is, it doesn't cost you anything. And if it doesn't work, no big deal. But if it does work, why not? So that's why I recommend it so highly because it has, I've seen it have impact in different areas. So why not try it out? Thank you very much. I definitely will. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank so, you so much. I, sure. I'm just seeing if there's any, any questions. Uh, and see any comments. Uh, something to leave. Oh, something to leave for work. Okay. Um, so that's it. So that that's um, my stuff. If you want to check out my, I, I'm not sure I can do this officially. I, I will say it anyway. If you want to check out my stuff, my site is my name. So barryselby.com. You can check out my stuff. That's as much as I'm going to say. I don't want to. I don't want to cross swords with me and get upset if I promoted too much stuff. Um, I thank you for joining me again. Watch the, if you, if it gets confusing, go back and watch the replay again, get them, get the information from it. Um, I also know that I will be back again on, um, 
March 10th, I believe. Yeah, March 10th. So I'll be on for another one then. And I've got a different topic for that time. So if you want to reach out to me, you can. And take this to heart. Use it, practice it, play with it, have fun with it. And uh, I hope you, you find it useful. Thank you. Do you know the what, what the Facebook address is that it's going to be, where the replay is going to be on? Is it on a particular location, site? It will be in the Self Love Revolution Facebook group. All right. Okay. Got it. So wherever, so wherever Mia posted my my promotion for today, the replay will be in the same place. Excellent. Thank you so much, Barry. Really appreciated that. You're welcome. Very, very helpful. Thank, thanks for all the questions, Anna. I appreciate you jumping in and being the, the main questioner. <laughs> it's been good. Absolutely. No problem. Have a great day. You too. All right. Thank you, folks. So I will see you again soon. Take care of yourselves. And okay. tune in tomorrow for the next, I think it's on tomorrow and Monday, that's Monday, the next Monday. speaker. Thank all you right. so much. Looking forward to having you back. Okay. My pleasure. Take care of yourselves. Thank you. Bye.